Christine Lagarde is the first woman to be managing director of the International Monetary Fund. Her organization is an economic advisor and occasional lender to nearly 200 countries. Lagarde took office in 2011 uh, when the global economy was recovering from the financial crisis. The IMF was also shaken by questions about its own governance. Forbes routinely ranks Lagarde among the 10 top most powerful women in the world. She was elected last year to a second five-year term. We welcome her back to the table. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, it's good, morning. good to have you in New York. Lovely to be here. Uh, where the UN is meeting, and we heard yesterday from President of the United States, Donald Trump. Uh, how would you characterize the speech? You know, I'm not particularly interested in rhetorics, and uh, I'm far more interested in the realities. And what I heard yesterday about uh, North Korea in particular had a lot to do with politics and rhetorics. I was in Korea last week. And I could see for myself, you know, how complex these issues are and how critically important it is for the South Koreans who live just across the border and within range of whatever could be done uh, across uh, the line of demarcation. So I think that those issues are so difficult, complicated, that they require a lot of goodwill, a lot of uh, calm, uh, and a lot of cooperation. And that's where I think that uh, yeah. You know, rhetoric does not necessarily help. But in an interesting example, the president did suggest, you know, that the UN and the Security Council had had a, a series of approvals of sanctions mm -hmm. where the UN was acting as it should. Absolutely. And, and clearly the vote that uh, rallied all members of the Security Council in order to reinforce the sanctions was a historical vote and clearly one that is bringing uh, the leaders and the countries together uh, with a view to eliminating this, this massive threat and this uncertainty around. So that is exactly the right direction and it needs to be pursued. And sanctions, you know, economic sanctions have proven to be efficient. They need to be implemented. They need to be enforced. That's where, um, it, you know, it gets difficult because the issue of finding out where the shipments go, where the ships are registered, whether uh, Pyongyang is actually getting uh, some supply or not. It's so something that requires international cooperation and sometimes reinventing the rules. As Charlie said, you are one of the most powerful women in the world. Someone else who is labeled as one of the most powerful women in the world is Ivanka Trump, and for no other reason than she has her father's ear. There was a bit of a pushback given her presence in the Women's Forum in Germany, a long stage with you, also at the G20, sitting in for her father. Uh, as somebody who has really uh, taken pride in meritocracy and stressed the importance of meritocracy, you yourself. What was your take at Ivanka participating in these events, and do you think she earned a right at these seats? You know, she's focusing, from what I understand, on uh, women issues, empowering women, making sure that women entrepreneurs from around the world uh, can have access to finance, can be empowered. I think it is such a vital cause and such a way to try to boost growth, to reduce inequalities, to diversify economies, and to enable women to achieve their potential, that whatever, lots of other things that can be debated, the intention, if it is delivered upon, is critically important. Well, you, so I, fact, welcome, I welcome that involvement. I you, really in fact, do. have said uh, women's empowerment could be a game changer. Yes. For and, the it, and, and, it, and it's a no brainer, Charlie. It's a no brainer. Women can just bring so much uh, in terms of economic growth, in terms of profit to companies, in terms of common sense mm -hmm. in risk-taking policies. I think it's, it's criminal not to rely on women uh, more than we do. So, and I will continue pushing that cause. Yeah, good for yeah, you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, common sense. And Who could be against that? I like the common sense, and we're 50% of the population. Exactly. So, yeah. Yes. Somebody, there, yeah. there should be more women involved, yeah. actually, yes. in those I, sort of... I absolutely agree with you. Horrible. So what is your relationship like with the administration? He has made it very clear during the campaign, certainly, that he was not a supporter of the IMF. What's your relationship with his administration? You know, my, my point of contact is the Secretary of Treasury. And uh, very early on, I, I had meetings with uh, Secretary Mnuchin. Uh, we had good meetings, good discussions. Uh, he was preparing for the G7 and then for the G20. And uh, we contributed uh, to, I think, bringing, up, bringing him up to speed on, on certain issues that we focus on. Uh, on the issue of Greece, we had a good Where do you Greece, think you can make the most progress connection. with this administration? Um, you know, there's something that we do with every member. We review the economy of each country and we make recommendations. 
uh, we certainly have made recommendations concerning tax and the tax reform the first draft, and I'm not going to comment on the depth of the draft because I haven't seen it, but the tax reform in its principles, we support it and we are prepared to continue to examine and explore and make recommendations to boost growth, to create jobs, but, to but restore you, income class, uh, to middle class income. But you lowered your estimate for U.S. economic yes, we growth did. down yes, to 2.1 percent. Yes, we did. What's your... Well, around 2.1, might be a little, little higher than that. But uh, we did because there, was, uh, there, there were very strong market expectations early in the calendar year after the elections that the tax reform would take place promptly, that massive investment would be made in infrastructure, and that there would be a push uh, None of which has happened yet. Growth. It hasn't happened. It hasn't materialized at all. So that's the reason why we, we lowered our growth. So you think it would be very difficult for the administration to be able to meet its own goal of 3 to 4 percent economic growth? We think it's going to be very difficult, yes, particularly if the, the, the reform pace is as slow as it is. Yeah. yeah. And, of course and, and that contrasts with the rest of the world, because the rest of the world is, is doing pretty China's well in China's 6 terms or 7 percent. We have a 6.8 percent forecast for China, and, uh, and Europe is picking up now and, and gaining momentum. So the overall growth in the world is, is pretty, uh, pre pretty good. Well, if the president is watching, I'm sure we'll see a tweet that quoting you saying that we need to focus on tax reform here and infrastructure and getting things done. I'm sure he's yes, that, that is things true. stalling in Washington. <laughs> Christine Lagarde, thank you so much for thank joining you. us.